We're doing a series of videos on ideas for your model railroad. This set covers how you can add a power plant as an industry on your model railroad to add different types of traffic because you can have many different types of cars going in and out of the power plant and it doesn't take very much room depending how you build it. On the left, for example, you see the Riverside Power Station in Northeast Minneapolis. It was started in 1911. <clears throat> it was added on until 1965. And then in the 90s, it was converted to a gas turbine power station. Now on the right, uh, you see a power station that I'll talk about. It's down in the basement and it's on the model railroad. So we'll, we'll talk about coal-fueled power plants, because those are the ones, obviously, that need, need railroads. Uh, how they work, from coal to steam to electricity, the major components of a power plant. Uh, an overview of railroad operations, the cars in and cars out of the plant, and some modeling ideas. And unloading and conveying coal, a lot of the other loads that go in and out of power plant, some more modeling ideas, and John Armstrong's mine scheme which I think is quite brilliant. He was pretty, pretty brilliant. There are really two groups of power plants. Uh, the older plants were built before World War II. They're smaller uh, from like 1910 to 1940. Uh, they're smaller. They, uh, they have a tall building with a boiler or several boilers and a sh short building. Uh, usually there's a coal annex like over here, and then there's a turbine generator here. Um, the newer plants were built after World War II, and they're much larger. And this is from like 46 to 1990. Not much has been built in coal since 1990. All right. Yeah. So um, the power plants for a model railroad, they're very flexible. You can do almost anything with them. Uh, every coal fuel plant is unique, which they didn't standardize. Every utility thought they had special circumstances. And I worked at probably a, 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 about 100 power plants during my career. Because um, after I was was at the one power plant, I, I, I did consulting and was all over the place. The plants uh, were built from 1910 to 1970. Power prices were going down every year. So the public wow. city and the public utility commissions were happy. Also, the architect engineers that designed the plants, they like to design each one from scratch. It's more fun for them. <laughs> and it's more, of course, more billable hours. That's the cynic in me. But here's a here's a picture of a few of the plants I worked at. I mean, big ones, small ones, but literally every one of them uh, was different. And then in the um, uh, in the 80s, they started a, a few standardized designs that looked like this were, were starting to be built. But by that time, there weren't that many power plants being built. Um, so let's, since we're, this, this is the railroad video, we'll compare it to a steam locomotive boiler. And, um, steam locomotive, of course, is, has coal over here and it's a fire tube boiler. And, and that means the fire's in the tubes and you have a tank of water. And so the, there's an Archimedes screw that, that, uh, or a, a guy with a shovel brings coal in here, and then another screw brings it up here, and then there's a little device that throws the coal onto a grate. This is the grate, and the coal sits here. And there's a, this is the arch, and then the hot, the coal burns here. The air comes in the bottom, and the coal burns at about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, plus or minus. And then the unburnt uh, particles of silica and other things that don't burn, they fall down into the bottom. And so now we have fire up here. The fire gets sucked through the boiler. And so this tank of water, and obviously, we, as we talked about before, it's very important that the firemen keep this tank of water full of water, full of water because if it doesn't, uh, this is at 2,500 <clears throat> degrees, and, and the steel here would get soft, starts getting soft at about 800 degrees, so it doesn't take long. Now, the safety, mechan long no. the safety mechanisms they have, they use, they had a, a, like a, a, a plug that would melt at about 500 degrees, and so if, if uh, they did get too low, uh, it, would, it would melt the plug, uh, water would come in here, douse the fire, so, so before it blew up. And they had a few blow up, but not that many, considering there were, oh, I don't know, 50,000 steam locomotives in North uh, in North America. So anyway, so we've got this water boiling here, and the fire is going through here. 
and the the uh, the pink is the steam. So the water is sitting here at about, uh, say it's two hundred pound uh, pressure boiler. It says it's, it's at five hundred degrees. Um, it's boiling at 500 degrees. So it's 500 degrees here as liquid. And now here it's 500 degrees at a, as gas. And of course, that's right. the problem with a steam locomotive is it takes, uh, you know, it takes a, a, a few hundred uh, BTUs per pound to get the get the uh, the temperature up here. And then it takes 900 BTUs per pound to boil right. the water, even wow. though you haven't changed the temperature. So that's yeah. where most of the, the efficiency is lost. So here's the valve. The steam is trying to escape. And the, the engineer opens the throttle here, the valve, and so then it sees, oh, there's a place I can go. So the steam comes down here, and then it goes into a superheater. And that way they add more heat, and they were able to improve the efficiency from like 6% to 7%, which is quite a bit, and 7.5%. Uh, and so now it's, instead of uh, being at 500 degrees, now it's maybe at 700 degrees. And then it goes down, and the pink here is going down to the piston. It pushes the piston back, and it turns the wheel a quarter of a turn. And then wow. the steam comes, goes over to the other side and goes another quarter of a turn. Then it comes back to this side and pulls it forward a quarter of a turn. And then it exhausts up here through this nozzle, and, and it goes out this way. And, of course, by induction, it sucks the uh, fire through the boiler. And so that's basically how a steam locomotive works. Now, a, a utility boiler is, the, this is a very big one, but it's the same concept. You have coal coming in over here, and it goes into these burners. It's basically blown. Now, the difference is this is a water tube boiler. So instead of having, uh, it's a big, huge box. I was surprised. It's just a very simple box. They, they're, the, old, the old ones used to be small. The new ones are huge, but they're just full of water. And so then the, the, the fire burns at 2,500 plus degrees. This is a picture of a, a burner where they blow the coal in. It's a pulverized coal boiler. It, it's, uh, the coal is going in about like face powder, talcum powder. And so it, it instantly burns. And so it's burning here at, at uh, 2,500 degrees. And so it boils the water. And it, it'll be at, say, the old ones are at 700, you know, 200. 50 pounds, um, 500 degrees. Well, then they have superheaters hanging up here. So the steam goes through all these tubes and gets much hotter. And so they get extra energy. And then the gas comes through here. And then they have an, uh, an economizer and a feed water heater and all sorts of things to extract all the energy they possibly can. But it's a fire tube boiler. That's the difference. No, this so is a water tube. Oh, sorry, excuse me. You are absolutely correct. Thank you. It's a water tube boiler as opposed to a fire tube boiler. So the water's in the tubes. And the the fire water's tube. in the tubes. Right. Um, so anyway, looking at a schematic of a power plant, we have a coal car here. It dumps hmm. coal into some kind of a bunker someplace in the building or later on it was outside. And then there's conveyors that bring it into the boiler and then it's blown into the boiler or in the old days it was just thrown in similar to a, a steam engine. And it burns, and then the ash falls out, same process as in a steam locomotive. And then it comes up here, and it, it goes to superheaters, and then it goes out the uh, chimney. Uh, the, old, the old ones used to have, uh, like, cyclone, um, little cyclones that they would, they would run the, the smoke through that would take the big chunks out. And then later on, uh, obviously, they had to add a lot more uh, pollution control. And there's a feed water heater up there, similar to a, a steam locomotive, but they're obviously a lot bigger. So here's the fire burning, and it, it boils the water, and it makes, and then the steam uh, goes out to the to the turbine, and then the smoke goes on up the chimney. So then the next step is now uh, we have boiling water, and we have these superheater the tubes literally like this. They're hanging in the in the boiler, and they get hot, and uh, they boil the water. Uh, they they heat the boiled water, heat the steam. And so now we have this superheated steam coming out of here at uh, similar to the old ones in the in the uh, 20s were like a steam locomotive, 200 and some pounds at 700 degrees. And it comes over here and it goes into a turbine. But instead of going to a piston and getting used once, the right. turbine has like 15 stages. Just It looks like a jet engine on an airplane, if you've ever seen right. it inside okay. of one of those. Cool. Yeah. And, and it, each time 
it goes through one of those stages that extracts energy. The other thing they do is they have river water or cooling tower water coming in and they have t tubes um, of water in this condenser. And so the steam comes in here and it condenses. And so this is a, this is a, almost a perfect vacuum in here because this, the, the steam condenses uh, 300 to one three hundredth of its volume. And it, of course, that creates a vacuum. So the, the turbine is not only being pushed by the by the steam, but it's exhausting into a instead of exhausting into fourteen pounds, um, which is which is the the pressure at in, in, in like a steam locomotive does. This is exhausting it almost into a perfect vacuum. So now we have the turbine is turning, and that turns the generator, and then the generator is generating power at all oh, say. Um, 15,000 or 20,000 volts, that goes to a transformer that, ch that transforms it from 15,000 volts to 115,000 or 230,000 or 345,000 volts.